Hello, everyone, and Hello. welcome, every and welcome everybody to our conversation with Ottobong Nakanga and Nuno Vasconcelos about Calf to Flow. Uh, my name is Clara Meister. I'm part of the curatorial team at Gropius Bau and had the pleasure and honor to work on Ottobong solo exhibition, There is No Such Thing as Solid Ground, which we have opened in July this year, 2020. And part of this exhibition was um, the space of Calf to Flow, which was managed by you, Nono. Before we dive into the conversation, I would like to um, invite everybody to join the conversation with questions after about 30 minutes of our conversation. And um, to start, I think I would shortly like to introduce you, Otto Bong and uh, Nuno, and then um, we fall right in. <laughs> so, um, Otto Bong, you've been the artist in residence, in house artist in residence uh, last year in 2019 at Gropius Bau, which you also, um, where you also worked on Calf to Flow. And um, we had a lot of conversations about um, care and repair also then, which also has been a huge interest of you also, um, these notions in relationship to the complex relationship of people and land. Today, we will put a focus on your project Calf to Flow, which started 2017 at Documenta 14, and which consists of three phases, of which the third phase, Germination, was part of your residency last year and also this year what Nuno has worked on. So Nuno, you're an architect born in Portugal, based still in Portugal and also in Berlin. And you've also worked in multidisciplinary teams and were always very, or are very interested in building refurbishment and the research of natural materials and older techniques of construction. And in 2012, you started to deepen your research about working with rammed earth something that you have also followed up when you were here with us in Berlin. So um, I think as a start for this conversation, it would be beautiful to if Otto Bong, you maybe could introduce Calf to Flow a little bit to us. The support structure, the initial idea, and the outlets. Um, thank you, Clara, for this uh, moment, and thank you for the invitation. Um, it's really an honor to be here and to talk with Nuno and also with Clara and to be able to expand further on Calf to Flow. So I will just um, um, start quite briefly. Um, Calf to Flow was an idea that I started thinking about in for quite a while, but I, you know, I didn't know exactly how the work will develop. But when I was invited to Documenta, it made sense to be able to think of a work that goes beyond the exhibition space and to have that exhibition space as a platform to be able to expand an idea that enters into ecology, into um, skin care, um, body care, um, into um, um, the geographies and thinking of ways in which one can think of support structures, think of economy, and also think of places that are going through um, um, different kinds of um, extractions. Um, and so with that, how, how does one create a work that contains all these thoughts? And I think how to flow emerged from these kinds of questions I was asking. So the first stage was, of course, being invited by Documenta I was um, in Athens. And I stayed in Athens for about four months. And, um, and there developed uh, with uh, a group and a team, um, Maya Tunta, Evi Lachana, uh, Todoris. Um, there were different groups of people that worked on the project. And the idea was to create something that could last longer than um, just the time in Athens, but could connect to Castle. And then from there, open up other fields of expansion. So my the idea was to make a soap 
And from there, with the soap, um, it can then open up um, thoughts around land, soil, extractions, economies, um, oils, butters. And with the soap, we got materials from um, the Mediterranean oil, um, oils from the Mediterranean oils and butters, Mediterranean and North Africa, West Africa, and uh, and Greece, and um, yeah, and Greece itself. So with that, we made the soap that contained um, charcoal, and we made about fifteen thousand soaps, which were then sold in in Castle, and from that money, um, we're able to open a foundation and an art space which is run by Maya in Greece called Aquaibum. Um, and then with that, we just to also think about how, what, uh, what, how do we think about economies? And for me, it was interesting to think starting from the place of soil and soil as a way of that allows for many things to happen and many things to exist. So even for the olive tree to exist, you need the right kind of soil, the right kind of climate for it. And um, so the expansion of from the economy of soil to the economy of oils to the soap itself, um, and then from there bringing it into monetary values and then shifting it later on into more of something that is knowledge-based economies. And so with that, with my residency in Grokosbau, um, it allowed for me to expand further also with Maya Tunta, and we worked a lot on uh, making projects um, that, or let's say events, that would invite people that work around different kinds of ecologies and economies, and that, we invited people like Newton Harrison, Laura Bonn, um, Maria Teresa Alves, and they could then expand further on their projects. But their projects have also been works that have informed my own works, that have also influenced the way I think. Um, so it's for me, it's important to, or for us, it's important to be able to bring in people uh, from different perspectives that can bring in ideas and expand on the works that we have been working on. Um, but I will focus a bit more on um, BC architects that we invited last year during the time of um, the residency. And, and that's where I met Nuno. And when we were expanding the idea for the exhibition this year, it made sense to have Nuno with us um, for the, um, let's say for the, five months, yeah, five months the exhibition was on, and to expand further on the relationship and the notion of soil and the notion of um, earthen sculptures, um, rammed earth, adobe earth, and what it means to work with soil and what it means to connect to soil. And so um, Nuno has been in the space and working in the space for the past, since the beginning of the exhibition. And um, and and the Kafka flow expands in different ways, and and I think this is just one of the ways out of quite a number of things that we've been doing. And this year, we also um, decided to make a podcast, and that podcast was um, founded by Sandrine Onyasio and also me. Um, but they're all interconnected because it's a way of. Um, thinking of support structures, but not only support structures, but things that can allow for the expansion of knowledge. So we, I'm so happy, Nuno, that you are at Gropius Bow. Well. <laughs> Our <laughs> shutdown, <laughs> shutdown Gropius Bow well in the working space. So exactly, I see this working board behind you. Would you like to introduce this, the, 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 your space? Space. Well, basically here, it's a space that it's open. Uh, it's, not, it, it's a part of the Autobombs exhibition, but it's also open to everyone. And um, basically here, it's like a, a, a small laboratory where we collected different materials from the city 
and uh, let's say we started from here to try out and create also these relations that uh, Otto Bong was talking about and to see how we can use the, the material as a technical construction uh, material, uh, but also trying to see it not only as a, from the technical point of view, but uh, from what it uh, represents in the city. What is this soil? Because we are working uh, here with, uh, with a lot of waste, let's, let's say. There is uh, soils that came from um, building excavations. There are demolition uh, materials. Um, and we are combining them. We are bringing back to, to the process, let's say, productive process. And uh, we th this is the base to, to go out from the museum also and to, to create these uh, kind of relations that we, we were uh, Autobong were uh, talking, no? This uh, is not only soil, it's, it's also about the space, what this soil means. It's, it's the material, but in, in the city, it's also about space and the, what this space means. It's also, I think it's an important, uh, important fact also from this uh, curve to flow period. Uh, this reflection that was, and this uh, th this reflection was made, uh, thinking also about the workshops that we could do, but trying out uh, to focus technique, uh, the social and political me meaning of the earth, and also the learning process of working with earth. Basically, the, this space is kind of an uh, experimental uh, uh, place where we try out and uh, we build uh, these relations with, with the city also, with different groups from the city, not just focusing here in the exhibition. I think it was in, I can say that we had uh, three directions. One was very technical the material, to feel it, to understand the composition of material. And this was uh, talked and uh, experimented in the workshops that we did. But uh, we tried also, uh, I would say, another direction was this more social and political uh, direction, that we go to, a, we saw a problem that uh, it's more than known in the city, you know, this, the land, the the value of the, a piece of land, uh, this piece of land, not just because of the material, but because of the space, of course, because this material that we are using actually is waste, normally goes out. But so we are, we try to organize a workshop in this direction. And that's why we worked also with the Rati board, that it's a, a, a place in the city that it's in this process of being removed and this place let's say it's um, a very diverse uh, it's a very diversified uh, place with uh, different uh, people different uh, activities not just for living or for working but uh, it's it have already a uh, identity in the in the in that place in between uh, Neukölln and Kreuzberg. So we try to focus also in this uh, meaning of Earth as a place and uh, the value of this place that uh, you create an identity and this identity helps to also to, to bring value to that place. But suddenly we take it out, the identity, because it's so the value of the market is already so high that we cannot afford it anymore. So somehow this workshop, we, we used a metaphor about the biodiversity uh, because there are, uh, it, it's, it's not a very densified uh, place, have uh, Ver, uh, um, Werkstätten, uh, and uh, people working every day there, but uh, living uh, also around, and they somehow construct an identity. And then, 
as the metaphor that we found there in the local. We found a problem there that it's a small wall that it's full of bees, and this wall will fall sooner or later because the bees started to, to make the, the holes. Uh, and the, these bees, uh, uh, we started to talk about them, to talk about the biodiversity and the, how this biodiversity is so important for the, the for not only us but uh, in general the nature. So this, we focus on this small problem to fix the wall. How we can fix the wall? Should we take care of the bees? Should we reflect of them? Uh, and this was also an idea about uh, okay. If we want to remove this place, these people from here, we also need to, to see it as a part of the environment. It's not just, uh, just material. There is a, it's an identity that it's there already. So uh, talking about bees doing uh, insects houses made of earth and uh, using the material gives us this space to discuss the, the other side is between uh, biodiversity and human diversity that it's so important for the cities. So this, it's the, let's say, it's a problem that we are facing everywhere in big cities. I think this uh, identity lost, let's say. So Earth, this workshop, for example, was specifically to go in this point of uh, what is Earth as a social, political meaning. Of course, we had the technical uh, input because we built it with the uh, Earth. So when you participate, you, you are already putting your hands on the Earth and uh, doing the things. So this was another direction, to, uh, for example. And then we had another third direction that uh, unfortunately uh, we didn't have time to finish or to, to develop because it was a, a more educational, combine different institutions and uh, create space, in this case here, uh, with, uh, with the Gropisbau, to develop a learning process of construction that uh, can be seen, not uh, uh, as a, um, a Finnish word, but uh, a long process word. And this would be for one month, would be also with the university, and uh, uh, was more related with construction, to see and to experiment uh, a ramp earth structure, and to experiment also to doing it in a different kind of way that it's not so normal. So that's why it's also important to have these places to experiment and to fail if, you, if it happens. But uh, it's not always that we have this possibility. You cannot fail normally. And uh, it's not that I'm saying that this would fail, but uh, uh, it's also bringing this attention to the material and to, to push away this uh, prejudice that people have about Earth as a construction uh, material. And if you see something that you are not used to, to see in a place like this, like a museum, and also the process of building, and you can participate in the building process, I think it can be a very good synergy, synergy between institutions and the, the city, because it's an open process. So this, um, this didn't happen, unfortunately, but um, uh, we, we worked uh, a little bit hard on that to make it happen, but for many reasons, and also this lockdown just uh, sh shut down uh, the, the possibility. But uh, this would be more in this educational process, also with the, the students, because to have a workshop like this, this would be a one month construction workshop inside a museum. So I think this could be very interesting also to see the, the, the development of the process, but also to give the opportunity to participate because it's uh, actually it's quite expensive to do 
these kind of workshops by yourself if you go somewhere to do it it's uh, quite uh, expensive and i think uh, for this would be a ramp earth uh, workshop specifically and for the learning process uh, uh, i think would be really important also to make uh, the people aware of this possibility of construction with earth not just in this ep let's say idea that uh, many people have you know the oh earth uh, the ep style uh, no you can do many things you can really do many things about like that it's not just that so if you bring it in a museum in another context with a uh, different uh, synergies i i believe that it's it's important also to bring this awareness about uh, the earth construction i will I will have a question to ask you um, because I, I remember last year when we were working on the on the workshop, the first workshop we did with BC Architects, and you were also you helped us to source the soil um, because it's not only I think it's not only waste; um, it's also that the specific soils from different areas. From I think there's Rudo area. There's mm -hmm. soils that were used the bread bricks you see in Berlin. So the, the soils are very much specific to the localities in which they are taken from. It's very much connected to the tones and the color and the texture of Berlin. And so for me, it, what I'm interested in finding out is like, how do you start sourcing and finding this kinds of materials, especially as you are you know, as most people, we don't even notice. We don't even notice yeah. things that are the different kinds of soils that are even in a place. And I remember a work I did in Pointe Noir in Congo, and it was in 2009 or so, in which I found out that there were like nine or seven or nine different soils or colors or types of soils in Pointe Noir. So for me, it was interesting to be able to see the kinds of soils that are here in Berlin. But my idea, my question is, how do you even start? Where did you, how do you start? What, um, and how do you start understanding the different kinds of soils and sands and clays? <laughs> and because they're different names for different things. I think, uh... In Berlin, actually, the earth is very similar everywhere. It's a very sandy earth. And uh, when uh, when BC and uh, you ask to to look for it, to look for soils with what we could build, so uh, I know more or less what we are looking for because I have some experience about the earth construction, but. Um, you just start with your bike going around in the city. Actually, it was like this that I started. I went around in the city. I saw a construction place. They were starting to excavate. And then uh, I started to try to go in. So I discovered that it's nothing easy to, to do this because it's... Uh, it's a heavy work, it's an industrial process, so you cannot just go there and take the earth. You need to talk with this and this and this and this. So somehow I, I try to first to to see what kind of soil we have around here. And basically it's more or less the same soil, very sandy. Some places still have a, a small percent of clay inside. When we when I talk with about the the, the earth, the earth have already this, uh, have the earth, have the, uh, have the clay, have the aggregates, sand. So this is the earth that I'm talking about. So what can happen is that uh, different earths have a different percentage of uh, this vari variety of um, particles. So here was a bit difficult to find uh, a soil with, uh, with clay because it's, it's not so much. But then going a little bit uh, around Berlin, you, you start to find uh, and you start to look also for places where they work with the clay, like um, 
brick factories. And this, we, we found it in Potsdam. And from there, we took also soils, so earth. So it's true, it's not all waste because somehow many things are getting reintroduced, uh, not with earth construction, but uh, for the roads, for, for new cement, uh, beton, uh, the, with the demolitions and uh, so on. So it's, 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 you just start to, to talk with the people, start to to see where are the people that is working with this kind of soil, and then you you need to organize uh, a way to bring it here. And uh, in the end, I, I finished with a company that was removing the soils from Berlin. So uh, I went out from Berlin, like um, 15 uh, kilometers, to bring back the earth that was removed from here. So they removed from the construction places to a field and then I went there and uh, actually they had, uh, with Lucky, they had uh, the, the exact place from where it came and we could uh, really relate it with the city. So basically this earth traveled to go out and uh, I, we bring it back to the city. But it was more a bureaucratic process because I could not go direct in the building place it's uh, mm -hmm. more difficult so in general uh, earth in berlin it's more or less similar very sandy with a very not so much clay so that's why we went a little bit out to bring also some soil that have more clay so we can combine it also to do other things also not that the this was uh, actually a surprise. The soil from Berlin, we could do things with that. I was expecting that was even more sand, but um, yes, we did bricks, we, we did plasters, just with that soil. It's not the best uh, composition, but still it's possible to work with, with that. And then if you, if you add some other soils, then you can uh, improve it to, to make it really a good soil. For depending on the techniques that you need. With regards to all these materials, right, because we've been talking about what happens to the materials afterwards, because you, we, we make, we have, the, I mean, there are tons and tons of earth in this room from different places. And, um, and I think oh, one of the things that we're discussing with Nuno was not just to work with the material, but to see how do we, how can this material allow us to connect to people that we will not necessarily connect to? Um, um, and to think of what kinds of institutions do we want to like connect with? Who do we want to work with? Or who would, who would we meet naturally in the space that would then maybe allow for a conversation or something to expand on with the work. So I've been wondering, how has it been with you working with or being in the space? Um, and, and what kinds of interactions have you had? Have there been like moments of spontaneous workshops? Um, have there been also um, ways in which one is thinking about the afterlife of the earth? Um, because mm. after this exhibition, and uh, what happens to the clays, to the earth, to and and in what way? And this is a question also for Clara. In what way can the work, let's say, because we have this idea to build the structure or to do this continuous workshop with uh, for the one month building of this tower. And so just to see how is the institution thinking also with regards to projects like this. But I will ask Nuno first and then Clara, yeah. Yes, this question about what we do with the earth, what, what we will do with all the materials that we collected was since the beginning uh, starting point, you know. Like uh, we don't just want to do things here and uh, leave it, we want it start something, start the process. And uh, for that, of course, the relations, 
the relations that we create with the different people is uh, really important because in the end, uh, this can have a continuity depending of, uh, unfortunately, many bureaucratical issues, but uh, it's still possible to give a continuity to the, these materials that they are here. Um, for about this, uh, this question, how it was to be here in the space, I think uh, was was a mix because it's very funny the reaction of the people that uh, they are not used to go to a museum sometimes and uh, they can touch. Only touching was already something sometimes for, for many people that was surprising. And then it, it happened in many uh, spontaneous workshops here, like in, in the afternoon someone else coming and we start we or there was something in process and they joined the process so this kind of relations happen but we also look it for for the relations it's not just the people that came here we started also to create uh, co uh, contacts and to to see how we can work together and um, uh, for example this this uh, this tower it's uh, this was specifically to 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 work in this direction of bringing the university working with the museum and uh, creating this uh, center synergy so i would say that many there was this spontane uh, workshop spontane touching and feeling and understanding and a lot of questions always uh, about the earth uh, different opinions people very skeptical about that uh, others they they saw it they are used it with it so there are many different approaches here in the space was very spontane and uh, actually it happened uh, these uh, spontaneous workshops without organizing just uh, we, we we just start to build and the people stayed here two three hours just like uh, kids in in a playground <laughs> basically but then uh, there is also this more uh, um, scientific uh, approach and uh, for this would be really important that uh, we, we could continue this uh, process afterwards the the exhibition and the, actually the the contacts are made the some materials that are here Actually, I think they will go to to this uh, group from the university, and this tower would uh, actually would be a beginning of uh, of a process that would be made here in the museum, but would be also it would go to another dimension that uh, is the ephemeral work that we do. So this the construction <coughs> and the demolition of this tower and then looking for a place outside of the museum and building it again it would show not only the, the possibilities that you can have with this material with uh, not a big uh, industrial process you can rebuild without ending and uh, this would give also a view of uh, uh, of this ephemeral passage that we have in, in Earth, actually. Uh, all the buildings that we are doing, uh, they are ephemeral. Sooner or later, they will collapse or they will need to, to be demolished or something like that. So this would be really... Uh, it, the, these um, contacts or, let's say, these relations would bring uh, these outside the museum also and uh, continue the process of educational uh, about earth construction and what you can do with that and uh, also in an environmental uh, level to understand that uh, you need to deal with your waste you need to deal with all the buildings that in 200 years will collapse or will not be able to to be a home so I think I, I, I'm lost now. I lost my thoughts, but uh, 
que <laughs> the the relations can, can... were also yeah. was not just spontaneous. We looked for it, and we started really, but then it's not enough time. You need more time to to develop. It's five months looks a lot, but no, especially with all the situation we are doing now. But uh, yes, and also there was a really interest from the the university to to collaborate in this uh, process because it's also very challenging when you create something new in another um, environment and also this uh, trying space. It's a space to try out, and this mm -hmm. I think. Uh, for them, it's also very interesting. Not only it's a way to to not to be fixed in a building as a university. We are going there in the university to learn, or we are we are going in a museum to see. You know, would be more uh, mixed, and then uh, with this would be just a starting point to. With the material that would, that because we would need a lot of material, something like 20 tons of earth, and uh, and uh, this material could be used also for another process because this would be temporary, no, for some months, and then would be demolished. But uh, this material, it's it's already a considerable quantity to build something to stay outside and you can see this uh, movement oh this was a tower and then it's here and mm -hmm. we can use it for as a building or or the same tower or whatever so yeah these uh, these relations needs time uh, we need time for that it's not uh, it's not so easy in a so short period but i think it's a starting point also, they are interested in in the materials that stay here the, to to bring the, there, so they can also try out and uh, do something with it. Maybe can I add something to, add something? to uh, Nuno's thoughts? Because I think what what Calf to Flow introduced or deepened and and what uh, Nuno also so um, carefully and um, implemented again with the space was this idea that this that that is that group as well is not um, only a museum or an exhibition space where you go and 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 look at something but it's it became through the workshop um, a moment and where there's really exchange and, and tactility and um, it opened up and I remember mm -hmm. there were there were so many beautiful moments like for example I was going down to Nuno for, to asking him of course some practical things again and then he was in the middle of the room with like a family and this child was like over and over with earth and this was like water and earth everywhere and as Nuno said it was like this playground idea and it just made me so happy because this conversation happened there and it was really a space to um, experiment and play and fail, as you say, and and maybe there's just this open outcome. Maybe there is no break coming out of it. Maybe there is no philosophical solution to anything or, 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 or um, how we deal with 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 what we are throwing away. So um, so I think this was the, there were many beautiful moments with Calf to Flow. Um, that we are very thankful to have for at 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 Gropius Bau. Um, and now this idea that uh, um, Otto Wong that you've mentioned with the um, sustainability, like what happens with um, the materials there is, I think for us it would be beautiful to stay in the conversation that started now also with Nuno and of course with you Otto Wong that we have this conversation for with a longer time and um, and with the, with the university that Nuno has mentioned and that the material is just not like now it becomes from from something which is to be thrown away or not used into something that now had like its shiny moment and then we forget about it. 
but it's really about respecting also the process. And I mean, their relationship with urban gardening initiatives, but with the university, but this is something which, um, of course, answers also the needs and requests of such a project, I would say. But yeah. this, um, when you started at the very beginning, Otto Bong, you said that when you started Cuff to Flow in Athens, Athens in, in 2017 experienced a huge crisis, which was an economical crisis. And now we are at a moment of this pandemia, which also influenced and changed a lot of conversations. And I mean, the three of us now are not able to sit in one room, but meet in this weird space, um, which is beautiful that it's possible. But so it seems that, um, yeah, I think there would have been, like there were other ideas and other, other um the possibilities, of course, which just close down now again, but hopefully will open up. I truly believe in this. Let's stay <laughs> positive to this. Um, I received some um, first questions, Otto Bong and Nuno, and, um, but maybe I wanted to ask uh, Otto Bong for a small present <laughs> for us, because we were, when we were um, working on the exhibition, um, we, um, you took us along in your process of drawing and also how important writing is for you. And I know that you also wrote poems which are closely connected to Cuff to Flow. So I was wondering if you would read a poem to us that maybe mirrors also some thoughts of Cuff to Flow. Yes. Let me get the soap and the poem that I'm going to read. So please bear with me. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> So I think the university also. So here we go. Right. So I think I'm going to read um, one of the poems. The one I chose to read today is called Chard. And we have the, the O8 black soap. And I will read Chard. So this is the packaging. <laughs> Charred, so I had to breathe in the absence of oxygen, scarred, so I had to leave this land of bare ash residues, fleeing, breathing, exhale. Um, and the other one, I'll read a second one. And this one is called Breakdown. Part, part, parted. Particles slowly breaking to hit another with an impact, merging encore. These are the, normally they're about 10 poems. I wrote two new poems this year to add to the eight poems. And each package with the soap would contain one of the poems. Um, so it, the soap is wrapped around a poem. And um, and each poem was made from the experiences or from the emotions or feelings or thoughts um, that came from the process of making the soap. So that was one year of thinking about the mold and how the soaps, uh, the oils merged together, thinking about the atoms, the particles, the protons, the different molecules that are bouncing and hitting each other, thinking about the political climate that feels like it's breaking apart, but at the same time, the temperatures of different temperatures in the world and, and forcing things to um, shift in a certain way and not maybe become a form, a solid form, but maybe multiple fragmented forms. Thinking about lands that are going through different kinds of crisis. And then I remember in 2017, we were looking more at migration, people moving from one place to another due to ecological, economical um, crisis, due to wars like in Syria. And the, reef, re, the, the sea, the Mediterranean Sea became the kind Kind of burial grounds of different bodies of people and lands like in Greece, the Mediterranean area became places where people found themselves um, landing on. 
and also with regards to Europe and the fear of having people come in and the economical crisis that was happening in different places. So it was the thought around all those places that are also places of nourishment to the world that produce oils and all kinds of oils, from oils from the ground under the belly of the earth to oils that grow out from the belly of the earth, you know, trees like olive oil, coconut oil, shea butter oil. And these places are producing in this oils for the whole world and at, at the same time are the places that are also being extremely charged so in a way to create those poems was to think through the nourishment and to think through the charred and the burned but to find a place with within where both worlds become form which is the soap itself with the charcoal and the oils and so and the, the poems allowed for me to really reflect and and put out something that was so close to the emotions and the thoughts that were around the work I was making or we were making. Um, so that's, yeah, that's the, that's the idea. Yeah, you kind of, uh, I just received a question from our online viewers, but it's kind of, it's funny because it seemed like you were entangled, <laughs> entangled with us because I think you answered this in part, let me read it out to you. Um, it says, hello, Otto Bong. I'm very interested in your work and would like to know the meaning of soil to you and your personal experience with soil. I also love the poem you wrote for the work, Taste of a Stone. Probably you can tell us more about this problem. Poem. Thank you. Um, the poem I wrote for Taste of a Stone, here you stand. Um, yes, it was about in your court, and uh, I have to remember the poem. I've written so many poems. I'm so sorry, I can't remember the poem. Anyway, um, but my relation, I mean, I, my first, one of my first early memories was um, underneath our house in Yaba in Nigeria. And I remember playing with sand, and we had this lots of sand. And um, my childhood was really filled with being outside and also playing with mica, playing with soil, sand. My mother farmed, we farmed our own vegetables like um, and pumpkin, um, with the pumpkin seeds and would plant that and have the pumpkin leaves that we eat with, or water leaves or, um, and so that relationship of understanding um, the, the, the soil itself and what it can give and what it produces um, became, or let's say, as time has gone on and also looking at how the situation is in general, food insecurities, all kinds of things, you start realizing that um, there were certain kinds of luxuries that you have and that, or that you had. And um, then you start realizing that it's so crucial in relation to making work, the, 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 the understanding that all elements allow for that possibility for one to even exist. And, um, and of course, when you start thinking about interconnectedness of things, of elements, um, it, it forces the work to start having a relationship in relation to land, in relation to soil, in relation to the air, in relation to skin, in relation to what you breathe. And then you realize that you can, you have to really think through how you're working and how and what that work is doing in on this planet itself. Um, and poetry allows me to really reflect or to put out in a way more direct way than trying to write an academic text on the thoughts I have. So poetry kind of brings it in a more um, emotional state, and but also in relation to things that you have, one has researched or one has felt, one has experienced, or one has um, made. Um, and I think poetry allows for that movement from science, emotion, um, um, theories, um, experiences to come together as a way or form. I don't know if I replied to your question, but yeah.
very beautiful thought to maybe conclude this conversation at this point, this part of the conversation, so to say. If there's anything you want to add. Otherwise, I would really like to thank you, Otto Bong, and you, Nono, for joining the conversation and the exchange and we had during the past weeks and months and years now. <laughs> and I hope for more to come, yeah. of course. And we would also like to thank Maya Tunta, who was very involved last year in the in-house artists and residents, as well as um, Sandrine Honliasso, who's working with you on the podcast, So, which is a very beautiful project as well, which I've... I really enjoyed listening to. So everybody who got curious, <laughs> listen to Eco. <laughs> and then I would also like to thank our team, Katharina Heise, Frank Vorn, Felix Petzold, and Natalie Schütze for supporting this. And I would wish you a wonderful rest of the day. I need to say thank you all. Bye.